the blue team, they're playing politics. You know, that's not my style. But when all the clouds clear and all this murkiness goes away, I'll still be standing. You know, every single time this toxic excuse for a chef opened his mouth, I had to hold myself back from saying this. You who shut is up, on, man. Listen, who is on your list, Joe? All right, so after his brief stint on the show, and thank goodness it was a brief one, where the hell is he now and what's he been doing other than cooking for a sponsor of our era's worst genocides? More on that later. But for now, let's get this video rolling, shall we? Mark's communication skills suck tonight. If I was going into a job and someone told me that this guy was gonna be my boss, I would fucking walk right outside the fucking door and go to the next rest. Amen to that. You see, many of the people who have worked for him or with him would agree. And I'm not just saying that, I came prepared with plenty of testimonies, so keep watching. But first, why are we calling him toxic? Well, you better believe I've got the reasons why coming up right now. So, let's recap his journey on the show and get to the bottom of this. Before they got into the signature dish challenge, Mark was all about this fancy dish. I'm doing a dish called chicharron con yuca. But then, there came a twist and he had to switch gears. Wondering why? Because this season, for the first time, Chef Ramsay changed the rules of the signature dish challenge to include some gambling. Chop. Pork shot. Ooh. Asparagus. Love it. Quinoa. I'm Puerto Rican. We cook pork like pros. And how did he perform? Well, let's roll the dice. Can you see that inside? Yeah. What is that? It's juicy. It's juicy. It's juicy, almost falling apart. In Puerto Rican chef, we, I mean, one thing we know, we know pork. Oh, man. Damn cocky, right? Oh, congratulations. Yeah, baby! Yeah, baby! Yeah, baby! Yeah. But wait, don't cheer yet. Because you have no idea where this is headed to. So what happened is, he eventually lost the creative shrimp challenge, as his dish wasn't part of the top three in the blue team. See, his team made an accurate and fair assessment of him very early on. He's already trying to jump at the chance to be the leader of this team. Let's work together, but let's be smart. I have a feeling it's all It was all talk. Declan's comments were far more hilarious. I mean, just go ahead and watch this exchange. It's one of my favorites in the show. Yo, man. Charge, charge. We gotta win tomorrow. Like, flash straight up, man. We have to win. If we can, that, that, that speaks to all of us, man. Think about it. Every day you gotta win. Bro, we're gonna start with tomorrow, dude. I hate That's all I'm saying, bro. I get it. And wait for it. Mark, I think he suffers from Napoleon complex. Couldn't be more accurate. No wonder why everyone loves Declan so much. From Amber to Mark, none of these whiny losers were spared. Cool. There's another monkey on a bicycle just going around in your head. We gotta he was on a roll. That Mark versus Declan gaffes were beyond entertaining, and I've compiled the best ones here, so be sure to stick around till the end. This, you listen to me, dude. This, we're not no, we're not no, you can kiss my ass, dude. We're in the dining room. We are. We're in the dining room. Moving on, during the next challenge, he didn't fare any better. And Tabitha in marriage. My wife Lisa does everything. I met her when I was 13. You see, Mark tried to bring his A-game with this dish. But his first shot got the boot because it was lacking a whole lot of dressing and lettuce too. How long on? How long on? One waffle, three Benedict, two steak. Tough break, huh? And to make things worse, the blue team ended up losing by a score of 8 to 10. Ouch. That was a narrow miss. And what was their punishment? peeling and prepping scotch quail eggs for Chef Ramsay's Caesar salad. Fantastic. Both teams are now- Now, Mark and Cody had to tackle 20 of those tiny eggs during their penalty. But here's where it gets messy. Mark started getting frustrated with his teammates' supposed sluggish pace. Punishment is not gonna be a piece of cake. It will actually be 600 cupcakes. Fuck me. As a wedding present for all our- Things got even more heated when Mark thought one of the eggs was a dud and chucked it in the trash. But wait, did you notice something? All right, now let me play it back for you real quick, and this time, pay attention. Fuck me. As I went However, uh-oh, turns out, sous chef Jason caught wind of it and wasn't too pleased. Guys, panic. There's no composure. I'm looking for a leader. Yes, yeah, chef. Now fuck off. Yes, yeah, chef. Chef Ramsey wants to now, Declan pointed the finger at Mark, saying he tossed out perfectly good eggs, sending sous chef Jason into a fit. And there's no way that I'm taking it to anybody. Right, shoot. I'm just letting you know that I'm not the person who's gonna ever say, yes, I'm gonna stand behind you. Or, or take command from you, ain't gonna happen. I'm here to- That's a warning. Look up to you, but I don't, I look at you. All I'm hearing is blah, 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 blah. No shit, it was the last warning. But when Mark returned, Cody spilled the beans. He it's like a little chihuahua. That's right, Declan, tell him. And what did Mark do? He went into a full-blown excuse mode. Sitting down, okay. you're like that. So that's twice you've disrespected me. Come at me again, and you're gonna see the knuckle sandwich. Hey, you gotta stop fucking smoking. See, this is why not just the contestants, but the viewers gated him too. 
He never took responsibility for his shit. He always had some or the other excuse up his sleeve. Despite that, here's what he thought. My energy, my passion, my soul is carrying the team right now. It's just in the air. You can taste it. And well, if you haven't already noticed, there's something else in the air. I call it arrogance. After losing the wedding brunch service challenge loss, the blue team's punishment was whipping up a whopping 1,600 cupcakes. Back at the dorms, Mark made it clear he wasn't one to play second fiddle. He boldly declared, And there's no way that I'm taking it back to anybody. All right, big man. He then laid it out plain and simple. He wasn't about to look up to Declan or take orders from him. I'm not the person who's going to ever say, yes, I'm going to stand behind you. Or, or take command from you, ain't going to happen. I'm here to... So let's see how that strategy of demanding respect to try and become a good leader works out for the guy. It's literally never worked for anyone in history ever, but surely our hero here can figure out how to make it happen. Anyway, judging by Declan's reaction, he's not exactly rolling out the red carpet for Mark's power trip. Blah, 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 blah. I am here to, I am here to win. Blah, 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 blah. Hilarious. Now that's what I'm hearing too. But then he hit back with this gem. You barking at me? It's like a little chihuahua barking at a big grizzly bear. Oh man, how I love his comebacks. I mean, the dude showed Marcus place. In my face, I'm sitting and sitting down, okay. you're like that. So that's twice you've disrespected me. Come at me again, and you're gonna see the knuckle sandwich. You better believe this had me in stitches for ages the first time I saw it. Well, what happened is, during that dinner service, Mark was handling the garnish station. When Chef Ramsay was about to announce the blue team's order for sous chef Jason's VIP table, Mark jumped the gun and interrupted Chef Ramsay mid-sentence. Chef Jason's family. VIP boys. He just butts over me. All right, but here's rule number one on Hell's Kitchen: no bowling over Chef Ramsay. I don't know what it is with you, but you got a big mouth for a small guy. Because I'm, I'm fucking pissed. When I call out an order, everyone should be fucking listening and cooking. That's it. But it wasn't over yet. However, Declan wasn't buying the apology and accused Mark of just talking the talk without walking the walk. Be careful, yo. All right, random thoughts incoming. I wonder if the editors get a bonus for that honk sound in the background or not. Either way, the men lost that service. When it came time for nominations, Mark found himself as the blue team's first pick for elimination, with Peter as the second. During his plea to stay, Mark emphasized his determination to win and pointed out the chaotic state of the fish station, putting the blame squarely on Peter. However, Cody wasn't buying it. I did what I could to communicate with Peter and help him out, but that station was a disaster tonight. Cody, why? I mean, we all know why, right? It's important to admit your faults, and all I'm hearing right now is finger pointing. Absolutely right. Despite the close call, Mark managed to survive elimination this time around. As they headed back to the dorms, Adam braced himself for yet another one of Mark's speeches, but they weren't spared of the sanctimony. Worry about me in what respect? Do I gotta worry about you? Clearly I do. The team this, the team that, they're completely full of shit. You wanna put the gun to the back of my head? You best believe I'm gonna defend my shit. Who is Shut up, man. Feel like all of you should comment this down below and let him know how much we wanted him to just stop yapping. Cody, however, wasn't having it. He pulled Mark aside and gave him a piece of his mind. Don't get up there, it should be about you and what's going on with you right now. You tell him. During the Mexican cuisine cooking session in episode 5, Mark had his marinade all set and focused on getting the duck just right while Amber tackled the side salad. But it wasn't all smooth sailing. Amber sarcastically quipped that their teamwork was a match made in heaven as they squabbled over plating decisions. Amber is spending 40 minutes to make a salad. We need two per plate. What do you mean, two per plate? We're doing three. I told you, I don't do even numbers on a plate. What do you expect when you have the two most insufferable people on a team together? But the worst was yet to come. By the way, if you haven't watched this video on Amber right here, let me tell you, you are missing out. Anyway, when it was their turn to face judgment, they presented their molasses soy marinated duck tostada with a mixed salad. Aaron Sanchez thought the duck was cooked perfectly, but she set off alarm bells for both Cody and Mary Lou, who were already on edge about her unpredictability. They knew f Chef Ramsay appreciated the acidity of the salad, but gave a thumbs down to the peppers too. Despite the critique, Aaron gave both pairs a point for their efforts. Security and bitter grudges could derail their chances of success. Cody was particularly anxious, fearing that Amber's presence would throw a wrench in his. But will you look at their beautiful team dynamics? No doubt that Amber can cook. I just don't want Amber to get nervous that she's gonna mess up and make herself mess up. Back at the dorms again, Amber's skepticism of everyone around her was so palpable. This is going crazy, like, girls, snap out of it. I cannot believe Well, I told you, two most insufferable ones. All right, quick question. If you had to work with either Mark or Amber, who would you pick and why? 
The blue team clinched the victory in a nail-biting challenge that ended in a tie at two points each. Their reward? That she's putting together. Amber's journey on the show was a pretty wild ride, no doubt about it. Sure, she may have rubbed some people the wrong way with her attitude, but hey, we've all had our moments, right? From her days as a contestant on Hell's Kitchen to her current role as Back at the dorms, Mark filled Josh in, claiming he had warned Amber about the plate size beforehand. But his teammates weren't impressed. Sometime later, Declan approached Amber and said, Declan, you little rascal. Ha 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 ha. It was fun though. Now, who's ready for another round of Amber vs. Mark? Yeah, yeah, I know you aren't bored of this shit yet. Because things are about to get nasty. 30-year-old adults with their frontal lobes fully developed doing high school level drama, always fun to watch. Wait, wait, wait. Keep the app, man. You know what? I see the resemblance. I see why viewers and even Declan have accused him of being a politician. During that dinner service, Mark and Amber were holding down the fort at the appetizer station. Amber couldn't shake the feeling that Mark was all over the place, which only fueled her frustration towards him. It's ringing 30 seconds, I got it. I'm with Mark on apps. He's all over the place. Meanwhile, Josh was handling the lobster tail, but despite Mark acknowledging that, he didn't fire up the risotto, insisting he needed just 30 more seconds. It's all time. It's ready in 30 seconds. I got it. When he asked Josh for a time, the latter reminded Mark that he was in charge of appetizers. Hey, lobster for the risotto, right? Uh, how long you need? No, I, your risotto. Your leave. However, he made the same mistake again by not timing the risotto with Josh's lobster tail. Please. The chef coming down, lobster tail? Yeah. He's walking. <laughs> Yes, that's a yes. Don't know what took him so long to respond. Wait, here's some afterthought. Was he trying to pull a Sarah here? Well, if that's the case, then I guess his plan failed. Because in the end, Chef Ramsay wasn't impressed and reminded Mark that Josh shouldn't start cooking the lobster tail until the risotto was ready. He doesn't run with a lobster until what? So I'm ready to go, Chef. Re Despite the rocky start, the blue team eventually got their act together and managed to send out their first order of appetizers. It was a bumpy ride, but they finally found their groove. When both teams were declared joint winners, Chef Ramsay threw a curveball and asked them to name a nominee anyway. Back in the deliberation room, Mark wasted no time nominating Amber. Amber, do you think I'm the weakest chef on this team? In my opinion, in the last two days, I think Amber has been toxic. Um... But Cody wasn't buying it. He called out Mark's hypocrisy for what it was. Oh, you're going to call out Amber? You're going to call her toxic? I think the only thing you need right now is a motherfucking me. Yeah, I love how straightforward and sassy Cody was. The dude just calls it as he sees it, no BS. As tensions rose, Amber couldn't stand being around Mark any longer. Cody found himself torn between nominating Mark or Josh, while Adam also considered Mark for the chopping block. Mark, feeling the heat, believed he was being targeted for his political opinions. Every night now because, oh, I know, we don't like Mark now and he know he, he's the hothead. This is completely political right now. Um, if you were rooting for a genocidal freak, I would judge you too. Also, personally, I wouldn't want anyone with dementia to know the nuclear codes. Cody tried to get to the bottom of it, but he cut him off mid-question, sending Cody over the edge. Are you saying that all of us that voted for you are A, wrong, and B, that what we are saying is only politics? Right because, now, because I get it. The alignment's not with me. I'm not done. Stop. He called out Mark for his aggression and constant gaslighting. So, cutting you off, I am talking okay, right so now. Don't do that shit, I'm right? not, but you're slamming tables. Of course, you are cutting me off. Talk, Cody. This is part of it. Talk. I mean, look at his body language, my money's on Declan. And I think the dude had a Napoleon complex, if you get what I mean. Are super aggressive. Most of the people on this team say the exact same thing. And so if you don't want there it's to be problems- It's an alignment, man, come it's, on. I just want to clarify right now, you are saying all of us are wrong. When it came down to it, Mark found himself as the blue team's nominee for elimination, standing alongside Lauren from the red team. During his plea to stay, Mark emphasized his passion for cooking. However, Chef Ramsay didn't let him off easy. He pointed out that the blue team accused Mark of not handling criticism well. Mark fired back saying, No problem taking it, but then when I give it back, that's where we have the disconnect. This is One viewer on Reddit wrote that Mark had some serious chihuahua energy and needs to make up for his small stature with lots of barking. With a little bit of, if I don't get the last word in, it means I lost the argument sprinkled in. Someone who worked with Mark replied to this comment saying that it was actually right on the money. He really is like that in real life. According to this person, Mark also used to throw multiple kitchen utensils and saute pans across the open kitchen during service. He never got aggressive with him, but definitely is a bit of a creep. That I can confirm. You wouldn't believe the other allegations the dude has on him. Keep watching till the end to find out. So what happened is, during the craps challenge, he presented his honey glazed pork chop with salt and pepper haricot verde. 
Unfortunately, Chef Ramsay wasn't impressed. We are facing off against Jordan and Lauren's steak tostada. I love the fact that you were able to stay true to the ingredients. It's very authentic. Now, Amber and Mark try to... Yeah, he criticized the dish for having undercooked pork, which definitely wasn't what Mark was hoping to hear. Um, two, damn. Despite the setback, the blue team managed to pull off a tie with 19 points, thanks to Cody securing them the win in the challenge. Their reward? All of you will be doing a thrilling high wire act, walking the tightrope. That's right, with private lessons from our good friends at Absent. After you, yeah, it's time to celebrate the sea with an amazing lunch from my dear friend, Nobu. I've asked him to create an Later that day, Chef Ramsay tasked Cody with interviewing the blue team and selecting two nominees for elimination. Back in the dorms, Cody opened up to Mark, expressing his respect for him, but... We've done a lot of really great together. But I think right now, like, it's just kind of like a draw out of the hat. Yeah. It's a hard game. It pushes you. He acknowledged that the competition was intense and that it pushed them all. Mark agreed, and surprisingly, his response was mature by his standards. You find out who you are. Back home, I'm always the guy with the answer. Like the, the guy you met the first couple nights, remember, that's who I am. That's the only way. It was definitely a moment of introspection for him, and I can respect that. And I found another side of myself here. You've seen me take a back seat and be a supportive role. My time in Hell's Kitchen has really made me rediscover who I am as a chef, as a father, as a husband. You know, I'm gonna walk out of here a better man. Mark found himself as Cody's first nominee for elimination, with Amber as the second, joining Lauren and Jordan from the red team in the Cook for Your Life challenge. As he got cooking, Mark opted for a brown sugar rub for his dish, feeling totally in his element. My dish is not traditional, it's outside of the box, but that's me. That's who I When it was his turn to face the judges, he felt confident in his dish, presenting his brown sugar coriander rub filet with twice cooked potatoes. Chef Ramsay wasted no time questioning Mark's choice of using brown sugar as a rub. One thing that scares me, why would you put brown sugar rub on top of a filet mignon? I've done it before, it's delicious, and I feel confident. While Chef Ramsay praised the flavor of the steak, he reminded. But when you add sugar, one part, two parts salt. Yes. Despite the critique, Mark nailed the temperature of the filet and remained hopeful that his dish would shine. In the end, he was the second chef to be sent back to safety. But when you add sugar, one part, two parts salt. Yes, chef. But now the temperature. Young man, you can cook a filet. Thank you, chef. The cream will rise to the, on the cream. Okay, next up, Jordan. Let's go, please. My dish looks baller right now. I'm sad I have to feed it to Chef Ramsay because I would really enjoy eating that. Right, describe the dish, please. Chef, what I have for you is a mushroom rub filet. Underneath, you have parsnip and potato. When the next dinner service kicked off, Mark found himself manning the fish station. Right now, there's still a few glitches. You got two lobsters dropped, right? Yes, Dad. Yes, Dad. Well, he indeed was. The weakest member of the group still is Mark. He's going to try really hard, but it's all talk. It's all bravado. See, he seemed to lack a bit of self-awareness. I felt like I was getting uh, times that were impossible for me to match. He's lying. Okay, he lacked a lot of self-awareness. His tendency to talk a mile a minute probably didn't help either. Especially in a season known for its likable cast, Mark struggled to find his place, speaks volumes about how out of sync he was. Nobody seemed to like him on a professional level or want to work with him. Anyway, coming back to the episode, and he served up some lackluster scampi. Adam, walk that please. It's lobster. Don't know why he made Adam do it for him, but Chef Ramsay promptly sent it back either way, so not exactly worth the effort. There's no citrus, there's no season, there's fuck all in there. And when he asked for a refire, Mark went silent. Yes, Chef. Scampi. I'm dying here. Where's As the night wore on, he found himself dealing with a different dynamic at the fish station, juggling various items beyond just fish. Station tonight, because I'm cooking fried eggs, never as easy. Oh, really? Serious a fried egg. My blood boils. Why do I have to be standing around these turkeys when I'm trying to soar like an eagle? I sympathize, Big D. Mark even enlisted Adam's help with frying up an egg. Stop. Fried egg? Egg ready? You got the egg, Mark? Yes, egg's right here, yes. Hurry up, please, let's go. I got you, okay, on that okay. egg. Thank you. Egg! Egg coming there now, chef. Behind me. See, Adam had to pick up his slack. Can you look at a fried egg? No raw white and not crispy in the knee. Yes, hurt, Chef, hurt. What happened is it made Adam look bad. And then Mark hit a snag when he misinterpreted the next order, thinking it was one salmon and two veal instead of one salmon and one New York strip loin. 
Mark? I thought it was one sandwich, two veal. Really? Is he serious? Chef Ramsay, understandably infuriated by the mix-up, called out the blue team and dragged them into the back pantry for a serious talking to. He berated them for their lack of teamwork and cohesion, and ultimately sent them packing back to the dorms. Nothing came together. As a team, right now, in the dorm, come up with two individuals that you could do without. Is that understood? Yes, sir. Pathetic. In the aftermath of the lost service, the blue team had to nominate two members for elimination. During the deliberation, both Declan and Amber pointed fingers at Mark, blaming him for the night's poor timings. Mark defended himself, insisting he was doing his best to communicate effectively for the team. But Amber saw it differently. He was furious that they were gunning for him, seeing it as a personal vendetta rather than a fair assessment of his performance. But Adam fired back, saying Mark's problem that night was needing help when he had his own tasks to handle. It wasn't my job to cook the egg. The only problem that I had tonight was how much I had to help out Mark. I, I'm helping eggs, I'm helping fish, I'm helping scampi, you're asking about veal, you're asking... And by the way, I'm on Team Adam here, just for the record. In the end, Mark was the blue team's first nominee for elimination, with Adam as the second. During his plea to stay, Mark emphasized his adaptability and even tried to shift the blame to other stations, claiming Fish wasn't the weakest link. In the face of adversity, um, I've been a great supporter of my team at any moment, with my team working against me. Yup, Cody's face said it all. Mark managed to survive elimination, thanks in part to his dramatic speech. I can go the distance, I've I have shown the taste. ability to adapt. I'm here to fight, and I've still and tried I've to be when I've had to help out. team player as I can. That's why I sh Given that Adam took the fall for Mark in service, viewers have called his elimination the worst one yet. Unjustified and uncalled for, and I agree. Adam. Fuck. Take off your jacket, young man. I put you in the garnish. That was the one position tonight that I thought you were going to shine and nail it. When I give you that responsibility, you can't step backwards. Yes, sir. You step up. Tonight, you did not step up. Yes, sir. I understand. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Really Good night. appreciate it. Thank you, bud. Plus, Adam was consistent and deserved a black jacket without a doubt. I'd ask you to let me know what you think, but I'd be shocked if anyone was able to disagree in good faith here. Get this, even Adam himself was shocked and revealed he waited for Gordon to say, back in line, after saying his name instead of Mark. It's like the most vivid part of the show that I remember is, you know, when he says, oh, like, he pulls you up and sometimes he gives you the double where he's like, get back in line. I swear that was coming, you know, and then when it didn't, it the whole show stops right then and there, right? Like, you're out of it. You know what? Mark absolutely should have gone home over him. And I feel like this whole video was a testament to that. But before sending the chefs back to the dorms, Chef Ramsay gave Mark a stern warning to step off his personal island and start working with the team. However, Mark seemed unfazed. Who I am, my skills, my fierceness is extremely uncomfortable for them. And we're just getting into the thick of it right now and I can't wait to see how it all unfolds. While Declan wanted to hash things out that night, Mark was having none of it, refusing to engage. What are we talking about? I'm not talking right now. I bet you're not. Cody. Despite Amber's efforts to calm the tension, Mark confronted Cody. Fuck. No, 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 no. Let's just take a breather. Keep sending me up. I'm going to keep fighting. You're not fighting. You're yes, lying. I'm no, I'm not That's lying. What... Cody rightly accused Mark of lying to Chef Ramsay about his commitment to the team. You're doing you right three now. Items. You got three Baby. items. Oh, three. Hey. Let's keep it <laughs> Every clean. No, you'll miss his last. Then, in the five protein burger challenge, Mark Mark presented his creation. A chef in New Mexico, we love spiciness. I'm gonna have a nice spicy burger. I think salmon goes great with spicy flavors. What was that? A salmon burger with grilled jalapenos. Unfortunately, Chef Ramsay thought it was way too hot to handle, and he ended up losing that round to the red team. That is hot. <laughs> Why do you need a fiery sim <laughs> Hell, yeah, it's spicy. Cody had some words of wisdom in the aftermath, too. Whole oh, jalapeno was too hot. Huh, who would have thought? I'll tell you who. Anybody, anybody that has cooked or eaten a jalapeno. Undeniably hilarious as that was, let's move on. Before dinner service kicked off, Mark opted to take charge of the appetizer station. Go, I need finesse from you. I only want your best, don't yes, give me chef. shit. Yes, I'm not saying- When the 12 top table order came in, Cody offered to handle the risotto for him so Mark could focus on the carbonara, but things quickly went south. Is this your risotto? I'll do this, you work on your carbonara. Yep. Mark, where's your carbonara? Oh, Mark, so sorry. Mark, where's your capers? Dinner service is starting up and Mark's already in a hand. Mark's disorganization led to Cody feeling like he had to babysit him. I will be the leader that I am. I will hold your little hand and walk you. Walk you like an infant child. To make matters worse, Declan discovered that Mark's flat top had been off the entire time. Here, look. It's not even on. 
stove is off. Who turned it off? It, the fucking stove is off. Yes, Chef, just one of them. It was on. So I don't. So who turned it off? Cody made the last risotto. Cody did. He cooked the risotto right here. Interesting. Did you not, Cody? How long in that risotto? The blame game. Mark shut out Cody's attempts to help with the risotto, resulting in bland dishes and curdled carbonara. Chef Ramsay's disappointment was palpable as he showed the blue team the subpar dishes, with Cody reminding Mark to listen up. It's not even finished, there's no gloss on there. Taste that. That's curdled overcooked, there's no fucking seasoning Mark, in now there. if I tell you it's not ready, it's not ready. When Ramsay demanded a refire, Mark sent it up, but Chef Ramsay spat it out, disgusted by the taste. That better be good. Mark, come on, speed up! I'm glad you got so much time on your hands! That's disgusting. Dragging Mark into the back pantry, Chef Ramsay laid into him. You wanted to be on appetizers, right? Yes, Chef. So far, nothing's come yes, out chef. on point. I'm warning you, get a... With a firm warning to shape up, Ramsay made it clear he was keeping a close eye on Mark. Point. I'm warning you, get a grip yes, now. Chef. Yes, Chef. Quickly, yes, and chef. I mean fucking quickly. Yes, when the blue team faced yet another loss in service, they had to nominate two members for elimination. During deliberation, Mark threw Declan and Amber's names into the ring, arguing that he was better than both of them and pointing out major issues with the meat and fish stations that night. Mark, my vote is Declan and Amber. You're trying to tell me you think you're a better chef than Declan? I do. You think you're a better chef than me? I'm convinced of it. No way. He was way in over his head. Cody had a different idea. He nominated Mark for elimination, leading to a heated exchange. And you can kiss my ass. Hold the fuck on. You hold she, the fuck on. She said. You watch how the fuck you talk said, to me, dude. You know fucking you need tough to guy. Relax. Exactly. Who turned off my exactly. oven, dude? Was Cody vehemently denied it, stating he had never touched Mark's flat top since the start of their time on the show. But Cody hatched a very smart plan to get rid of Mark, and let me tell you, I'm not kidding when I say it was absolutely ingenious. However, tensions only escalated from there. Amber chimed in, reminding Mark of his struggles with timing and suggesting he deserved to go home. To go I can home. cook way better than you, and you talk too much. I talk too much! As much as I also detest Amber, Mark was clearly projecting there. He then snapped in response to Declan's accusation that he had brought the entire team down that night, storming out of the dorms in frustration. Up tonight. Dude, the whole night well, You know what, then I won't talk you. then. Fuck yeah. you guys. Perfect. The whole night. Perfect. Up and you pick horses going up then. We are done having yeah, a conversation. You guys are full of shit, that's why. We are done. As the blue team faced elimination, Mark found himself in the hot seat as the first nominee, and second... That person is me, chef. You. Yeah, Cody nominated himself. See? Told you. Smart. There was no chance in hell he was going home that night, and he knew it. In his plea to stay, Mark claimed he had bounced back and accused the team of playing politics to protect themselves. This is a complete whack job, an assassination attempt on me. They are more concerned with protecting each other and playing politics than doing... Oh god, the paranoia! But when Chef Ramsay asked Declan about Mark's claims of sabotage, Declan denied it, stating the team had helped him get set up that night. Is that true, Declan? After hearing their pleas, Chef Ramsay cut to the chase. He bluntly pointed out the lackluster risottos and overcooked carbonara from that night's service before delivering the verdict. Mark was eliminated for consistently underperforming and for his habit of shifting blame onto the team. Oof, it was super satisfying, wasn't it? In his exit interview, Mark remained defiant. He claimed he had come to Hell's Kitchen to be authentic and accused the others of not being able to handle his energy. But Chef Ramsay thought differently. Mark is a big talker and a decent cook, but I'm looking for someone who can lead a brigade. Mark couldn't even win over his own t Exactly. There's more to being Ramsay's head chef than just cooking abilities. Anyway, after his stint on the show, Mark rose to the position of executive chef at Mastapas Y Vino in Hotel Andalus. Then, in March 2023, he snagged the executive chef role at Hotel Chaco. Your chef. The cream will rise to the... I'm the cream. Fast forward to March 14th, 2024, Mark stepped into the arena of reality TV competition once again, this time on Beat Bobby Flay in Season 35, Episode 3. He didn't win, bowing out in the second round, and let me tell you, he was just as cocky as he was back on Hell's Kitchen. And get this, one of the judges was none other than Ariel Fox, the winner of Rookies vs. Veterans. But that's not all. Mark also made appearances on episodes of Cutthroat Kitchen, and Alton Brown started to get visibly annoyed with him even faster than Chef Ramsay did. He was also on Chopped, so it seems like he's carving out quite the niche for himself in the world of reality TV, stirring up more than a little controversy along the way. Speaking of, an employee who used to work as a server with Mark shared a horrible experience. He took one of his friends to eat at Mark's restaurant and found the food and service average. Mark found his review, and guess what? He started harassing the server. He even tried video calling him, and honestly, it's just too disrespectful and creepy, not to mention a total invasion of privacy. But what do you know, he is infamous for not being able to handle criticism. 
You know who he reminds me of? Her? Did you watch this video? You won't believe the charges she's facing now. Anyway, that's all for today. Thanks for sticking around all the way to the end. But before you leave, don't forget to share your thoughts on Mark and if you think he was toxic for his team or not. I feel like I've laid out a pretty thorough argument here, but let me know down in the comments how you're feeling. And hey, you know the drill, so don't forget to drop a like, subscribe and turn on my post notifications. And if you thought this video was wild, then make sure to check this next one right here. It's even better.